welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today I'm going to be checking out Virtual Desktop on the Oculus Go. Now this application allows you to access your desktop PC from anywhere. So that means you can play your full desktop PC games from another room within the house or remotely access your PC from anywhere in the world as long as you've got an internet connection. Now Virtual Desktop will be releasing on Oculus Go on Thursday the 29th of November and will be available for $7.99 in British pounds, $9.99 in US dollars. On the website it also states that it will be coming soon to Quest, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that one. It's worth noting right now that Mac isn't supported alongside 3D SBS movies and you can't access a second or third monitor yet, but these things will be on the roadmap for a future update. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to set it up, which is super simple, and then show you what it's like to remotely access your desktop PC using the Go to play some games, watch some movies, and do some day-to-day -day activities. I'll also be giving you my final thoughts at the end of the video with a brief comparison to Big Screen, which does have some similar functionality, but is free to pick up. Now, I hope you guys and girls enjoy this one, and without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so first things first is we want to download the streamer application. You want to head over to vrdesktop.net and I'll put a link in the description down below so you can jump straight to it and you just want to download the streamer application. Once it's downloaded, it's super small, you can just open it up and start the installation. Once you've installed the application, you'll be greeted with this screen. And this is the streamer application. So all you need to do now is enter your Oculus username. And if you're unsure of what your Oculus username is, just put the Oculus Go on with the app running and it should tell you within the app what your username is. Before we dive into VR, I'd also recommend enabling the show touch keyboard button on your desktop. All you need to do is right click on your taskbar and just click on the show touch keyboard button. This will help you using the digital keyboard whilst we're in virtual reality. Okay, so once you've got everything installed, then you can fire up Virtual Desktop on your Oculus Go and this will be what you're greeted with. This is one of the really cool environments and definitely one of my favorites. It's kind of like a little office environment where you've got a PC screen in front of you, a little PC there, and you've got some really cool Oculus posters on the wall along with some sort of Oculus Rift prototypes on a little shelf there. Very cool. And you can also see the Oculus subreddit little reddit avatar there which is also a really nice touch i thought i'd emulate this room a little bit in this video by putting that love vr poster right behind me here as you can see so uh, now that we've got everything up and running i'll show you what the menu looks like and to get to the menu all you need to do is press the back button on your oculus go controller and you'll see the desktop that you're currently connected to now it's super easy to connect to it as long as you're on an internet connection you shouldn't have any problems at all and i'll talk more about that at the end about other things that I tested uh, with this application. So let's jump to the environments. You've got quite a few environments to check out. These top three uh, and Space Sky are all kind of void environments where it's just a big open space and I can show you that now. Uh, as you can see, it's just a huge big open space with a huge curved monitor in front of you. And to be honest, it's a bit too big for my liking. So I prefer to use the computer room for sort of normal uh, tasks on my desktop. And then I use the dark cinema for movies and maybe the home theater for some games. But I'll show you that in this video. So first up, I wanna show you some gaming, uh, which is a really cool way of playing games in virtual reality. And this is gonna be one of my favorites that I've been playing quite a bit just recently. Uh, while <laughs> I'm not making videos for you guys and girls and that is Shadow of the Tomb Raider uh, So this is just going to be launching now and now I can switch to my Xbox One S controller uh, Which is connected via Bluetooth to the headset. It's not connected to my PC So everything that I'm doing through this is through the Oculus Go and being sent over the internet back to my PC Which is really neat. So essentially you could play your desktop computer games Anywhere in the world as long as you've got a good enough internet connection Okay, so the game is just loading up now, and now I'm switching to Xbox uh, controller control, and as you can see here, I'm controlling the menu with my Xbox One S controller. Now, if you're interested in a controller for the Oculus Go, this is the one I'd recommend. Uh, the Xbox One S is the only Bluetooth one, so please make sure you get the S version, and I'll put a little link up here to a video explaining more about controllers, as I did a bunch of testing on it. Uh, but let's just jump into uh, Tomb Raider and I can show you what the latency looks like 
uh, in this game. But, you know, I'm not actually running this over a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I'm running it over a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, which isn't necessarily ideal, but even though it's not ideal, it still runs pretty well, and I'll show you that now. So in Rise of the Tomb Raider, we've got a little task to do, and that is to find a bow, uh, a champion's bow. If you've not played this game and you're a PC gamer, then uh, yeah, you should really check this one out. Now, it probably doesn't look that great on the video, and that is probably due to the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi that I'm connected to. If it was connected to 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, things would look a lot crisper, but you know, it's easy enough to play with, and I can see exactly what I'm doing. If it's anywhere, I'll bet the champion's bow is in there. Okay, that looks pretty creepy. So, uh, oh, we've only got our bow. Let's make sure we've got plenty of arrows. Let's go. What the actual heck is that thing? It's like a lion with armor on. Holy crap. Ah! X. Ooh. Ah! Oh! Oh, did I kill it? I think I got it. Oh! I feel bad for it now. Sorry, dude. Nice. Sweet, sweet champion's bow. So that is enough of uh, Tomb Raider. I just wanted to quickly show you what it was like. But as you can see, the latency when I'm pushing the buttons here is pretty decent. The fidelity of the game obviously could be better, but I think that's just because of the 2 gig 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi that I'm using right now. But let's jump into another quick game and I can show you what another game looks like. Okay, so here we are in a huge dark cinema, which is one of the environments in Virtual Desktop. And this is ideal for watching movies. So let's watch a little bit of one of my favorite movies, of course. Ready, player one. Throw to the egg. Here we go. <laughs> Woo! I love this scene in this movie. It's just so badass. I'm just seeing it on this huge epic screen makes it look so, so nice. If you haven't seen Ready Player One yet, I urge you to go check it out. It's super cool. <laughs> so that is what a movie uh, experience is like using Virtual Desktop. Now let's show you a little bit of productivity and for that I'm going to jump to uh, the computer room again. What I'm going to do now is just show you what else can be done. Of course you could do a whole bunch of things in Virtual Desktop. But I'm gonna just going to do some of the things that I normally do on a daily basis uh, on the desktop. So let's open a tab and let's send a tweet from within VR. So if you're watching this video, you can actually go to my Twitter and check out this tweet uh, so you know it is legit. And uh, yeah, let's type something out here using the keyboard and something like, uh, I'm sending this tweet from my virtual desktop using Oculus Go. Let's add a little emoji, uh, a little cool emoji. And then also let's add a photo a little selfie I took earlier, and then we can just send that tweet right now. <laughs> and there we go, it worked. I'm sending this tweet from my virtual desktop using Oculus Go. There we go. <laughs> Done. So let's jump to the outro and I can talk a little bit more about the application and some of the things I did during the testing. Okay, guys and girls, so there we have it. That is virtual desktop on the Oculus Go. And I have to say, I was really impressed with Virtual Desktop. It was so simple to set up and use, and the user interface made navigating around my PC remotely really easy using the Go controller. There are some similar applications out there, however, most require you to sideload an application using ADB, and none really work as well in my opinion. I also tested out Big Screen, which is free, but I just couldn't control my desktop, and it seems like it's been a while since they've updated the application. However, Big Screen is still one of the best solutions for joining shared rooms in VR and watching content with others. But Virtual Desktop is better for the single player experience. 
I even tested the remote access function using a 4G connection by creating a mobile hotspot on my phone and it worked surprisingly well. This means that you could travel around by just taking your phone and your Oculus Go to access your PC from anywhere in the world. It is recommended though that you use a 5 GHz connection, however it worked well enough using my 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi connection. I'm really looking forward to full 3D SBS movie support along with multiple monitors which the developers state is coming soon. Overall I'm really impressed with this application and it gets a recommendation from me. So if remotely accessing your PC from within VR is going to be useful for you then I'd totally recommend you check this one out. I'd love to know in the comments down below what use cases you would have for this. Was it gaming, is it movies, or is it productivity? Let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like this video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.